Hey guys, it's 662 here and uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a timer in your game. Um, first of all, I'll just, sh I'll just uh, show you what I've done. Okay, so as you can see in the top left hand corner I've got a um, timer that goes up every second. Um, this is pretty easy to do. It took me a while to figure out this. Anyway, um, oh, and also as you can see there, after uh, I think it was like 10 or 11 seconds, I got bots to spawn. So, anyway, so I'm going to save that. So, you want to open up your um, visual text editor. Uh, I use Microsoft Visual Studio, but you can use something like Context or Notepad Plus, whatever suits you really. And you're going to want to make a new Unreal script file and name it. Um, name it my hood and oops, add that okay so now we've got class my hood extends object now we're making a hood class so we don't want to extend hood uh, object we want to extend udk hood and as it, mine comes up there so that's easy uh, now we don't need the default properties, so we'll get rid of them. Um, no, I just need to put that there. So, um, so the first thing, as you should know, I don't know whether you're new to one your script or whether you're experienced. If you're experienced, you'll know that you always put all your variables at the top. So in this, we're having a variable which will be called time. So we're going to write var which stands for variable and it's going to be an int variable, an integer which means it just has a solid number so we'll put var int and then you have to put the name of it so we'll call it timer and then semicolon to cancel out the line or to end the line so that states that we've got a variable it's an integer and its name's timer and that would be the same if you wanted to put a string and so it would be var string and then call it text but we're not doing that um, right so if we have a look at mine now I've got a simulated function saying post to begin play and that then says add time now what this does is before the game starts it activates a function called add to a function called add time and if you look down here we've got a function called add time now, when I was just trying this out and seeing if everything worked, I just put the add time, uh, that declaration in here. But that activates it about 30 times a second, because that, um, that happens every time uh, a new frame's added. That's why you always put all your canvas objects in here. So what we want to do is we want simulated function. post begin play open close parentheses um, then you want I don't actually know what that's called but it's one of them curvy brackets uh -huh. and then in here we just have add ta oops add time open close parentheses semicolon and that is that bit done. Okay. So now we're adding. Oh, so yeah, I've explained what that does. So now event post. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah. Post render. Open close parentheses. Uh, don't put a semicolon. That's pretty essential. And now open space space close curly brackets and in here we are going to write canvas dot no, I can never remember this I'll copy it and I'll just read out what to say uh, so it's first line is canvas dot set pause so it's canvas dot s e t p o s um, obviously that means set position so this is the position on the screen 
uh, I've set mine to 10 that first one there this one is how high up it is I'm pretty sure or am I wrong um, as far as I'm aware that's excellent Why? Um, I can't think now alright yeah the first ones across and the second ones up so that means 10 across and 10 up so um that's that um canvas start draw set color uh, the color scheme in UDK is red blue green alpha so that's how much red you want in it that's how much blue red green blue red blue green RGB yeah red green and blue so that's how much red how much green and how much blue if you wanted it to just be blue you'd set these two to zero and that one to 255 and that would make it a pure blue uh, whatever's in this canvas pure, purely blue and this is the opacity so anything below 255 starts to make it a bit transparent but you don't really want that for text uh, the next really important bit is the canvas dot font this is what kind of font you want uh, now the standard thing to do is always just use this little line here which is font uh, canvas dot font equals class engine dot static dot get small font open close parentheses, parentheses semicolon um, and that just tells it what font to use obviously you can change that if you want I just never do um, the next bit canvas dot draw text so this is telling it what to write if you wanted it to um, be something like hello world you do just do that speech marks and then write whatever but if you want to write a draw a variable on the screen you as long as you've stated it here you can just type in the name of the variable and it comes up there simple so that means that every time the screen is rendered this is about like 30 uh, times a second the variable there will be drawn so now what we have now what we have to do is we need to tell her that every second we need to add one to the timer so function function add time open close parentheses semicolon no, no semicolon. No semicolon, right. Uh, open curly brackets, space, I mean, line line, close curly brackets. And in between these here, what you want to write is uh, time plus equals one. Now, anyone who's used to, um, oh, semicolon, anyone who's used to programming or using um, formulas in Microsoft Excel will realize that it is, it's supposed to be set out like that. If not, you might be a little bit confused, and if you are, please just accept it, it's the way it works. I don't know what language it is that makes it do that, but it, they decided to make it like that. Uh, I think it might actually work the other way, but... When I did it the other way, I was having loads of problems, so I did it like that and it worked fine. So just do that. Now, so um, we've set that to add one. Now, what we need to do is to get a looping action, we need to go set timer, open parentheses, one, so that's how long it lasts, true to keep it loop, uh, so that means every second it will complete this function here so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, apostrophe add time to apostrophe close parentheses semicolon and save that now what that's saying is um, when this function comes up uh, add one to timer 
and then set now don't get these two confused they, they have nothing to do with each other the variable timer and this have nothing to do with each other this is a command that is like it's a delay in other words and when this delay is over it performs this function the function and if you want it will keep doing that after that amount of time okay so now we need another function called add time to so function add time to uh, close parentheses open curly bracket close curly bracket and all you want to do here is timer plus oh, plus equals one semicolon save now that is that's that done yeah uh, so that should work now now what you want to do is in your oh crap yeah it's fine uh, in your custom game class which you should have if not you can just go on my um, tutorial for one of them because they're not hard to do at all really uh, what you want to do is just set your HUD type to the folder where all your custom classes are dot and then the name of your custom class so for the purpose of this tutorial I'll put my game dot my HUD save uh, okay now I need to recompile that oh. mm -hmm. wait for that to compile hmm sometimes takes a while sometimes does it really quickly there you go uh, command look full succeeded no problems open up the editor Open up your map. Now make sure you've got the right game mode set. So the one that corresponds with your new HUD. So survival game. Play. Now I should have blue. I should have a blue counter. There you go. Look. I've got a little blue counter in the top left-hand corner that's going up every second. <coughs> Uh, Shaking all that, that's all part of the game. Uh, anyway, um, yep, that's all that done. Any pro? Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just show you something else. Save. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Set position. I'm going to show you the kind of scale of the grid that you use for the set position because I myself am not exactly. Um, what's the word? I'm not very knowledgeable of the scale of the grid, so I don't know what, how much like a hundred is actually going to change its position or whatnot. so I'm just going to have a look now and see where it puts it so that's done that I'm just going to reload it Uh, we're going to launch that now. 
I just want to see where it is. See, look at that. I changed that to a hundred from so I times where that's position by ten, and it's only moved a tiny bit. So what I'm going to presume is that so zero is here, and I can presume that that's going to be a thousand there. I'm just gonna. Nah, no, no, I think that'll be enough. Anyway, hope this was alright. Any problems, let me know.